Tropical rainforests, a hot, humid forest found in low-lying areas near the equator. Forests provide homes and habitat for countless plants and animal species. Danielle Taylor, Sarah, Carlos, and I, Vicky, hope you learned something about the rainforest. Anything from what the Bengal tiger eats to what the soil is like in the rainforest. Enjoy. Here's a picture of where the rainforest is. It is in yellow-green. Rainforest climate. The average amount of rainfall per year in the rainforest is in between 50 and 260 inches. Rainforest temperatures rarely exceed 93 degrees Fahrenheit and rarely lower than 68 degrees. Humidity is very high, ranging from 77 and 88 percent. The vampire bat is a bloodsucker. When it is a baby, its mom pukes up its blood for the baby to eat. When it becomes four months, it leaves its nest. A vampire bat looks like a pig with fangs and wings. The thumbs help the bat climb on its prey. The vampire bat can walk, jump, run, and hop to stalk on its prey. A vampire bat can live up to 19 years in captivity, but in the wild, it lives up to nine years. A vampire bat eats birds and other mammals. The predators are hawks and eagles. It keeps the hawks and eagles population up. The Golden Lion Tamarin. First, let's talk about the animal's adaptation. The Golden Lion Tamarin has long claws for climbing trees and picking bugs out of small places. Also, when an owl comes swooping over, they flatten themselves against the tree and grip the bark as hard as they can. This is used as a survival strategy. Now let's talk about their interactions. Because they have so many predators, they sometimes sleep with other Tamarin families for protection. Sometimes the older sibling siblings help teach and raise the younger Tamarins, and finally their usefulness. Poachers desire their fur because it can sell for as much as $20,000 on the black market. Tamarins are social and help each other survive. One of the animals in the rainforest is the Bengal tiger. It eats monkeys, boars, wild oxen. It is hunted by humans. It is very sneaky and quiet to hunt its prey. Hi, my name is Danny. I am a king cobra. Some adaptations I have are the color of my scales can be olive, brown, or black for camouflage. Even as a baby, my venom is as strong as my mom's. I eat other snakes, lizards, some frogs, and some small mammals. I am afraid of mongoose, humans, and birds of prey, but I keep down populations of snakes, lizards, and small birds and mammals. The African forest elephant, or Pygani elephant, is endangered. They have adapted to living in dense forests by their straight tusks. Their straight tusks help so they do not get caught in the underbrush. Poachers hunt for their hard pink tusks as well. Another adaptation is that they are small so they can move around in the forest. Their home range is 2,000 square miles. And last but not least, they eat fruit. Then it goes through the digestive cycle and the seeds go to the ground and maybe the seeds will grow. That is an example of mutualism. Audio is from the top of an elephant. The sun is important to the rainforest because so then all of the plants get sunlight and grow. When the sun helps the plants grow, the animals have a place to live in. The big trees take most of the sunlight so then all of the little plants won't get much sunlight. It is very cool at the bottom of the rainforest. The little plants always have lots of shade. Hi, I'm a strangler fig. I will be about 148 feet tall when I grow up. I live in crooks of trees and between branches of other trees. I take food, nutrients, and water and sunlight from my host tree. I have a symbiotic relationship with the strangler fig wasp. I keep down other tree populations and I have delicious fruits animals like to eat. A jackfruit can weigh up to 100 pounds and are produced directly on the trunks and branches. The fruits are green and yellow, also warty on the outside. The inside seeds are surrounded by yellow flesh tasting like pineapples and bananas. These seeds are eaten, boiled, or roasted. Other mammals like to eat this tasty fruit.
One of the forests in the rainforest is the mangrove forest. It grows in the water to protect the rest of the rainforest. There is only 4,000 acres left out of 393 million acres. The food web you are seeing is an example of interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is the connection between two or more different organisms. The arrows on the food web show the flow of energy from one organism to another. As you can see, an example of interconnectedness is the harpy eagle eats the vampire bat. Now let's talk about mutualism. Mutualism is a relationship between two species of organisms in which both benefit. One example of mutualism is an African elephant and fruit or a golden lion tamarind and fruit. In both relationships, when the animal eats the fruit, the animal gets the food and the seeds travel through the digestive system, fall to the ground, and hopefully grow into a small tree. Parasitism is a relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is harmed. If you recall, earlier we talked about the strangler fig. It is involved in a parasitic relationship. The strangler fig is a parasite to its host tree, therefore harms the host with a deadly grip with its branches, sometimes killing the host tree. According to Webster's New College Dictionary, commensalism is a relationship in which two or more organisms live in close attachment or partnership, and in which one may derive some benefit, but neither harms or is parasitic on the other. After reading that, I'm confused. An easier definition might work better. Commensalism is when one organism benefits and the other is neither helped nor harmed. In the rainforest, a Bengolia villa plant hooks onto other plants for support. It helps the Bengolia villa and the other plants just help it along. That is commensalism in the rainforest. The soil in the rainforest is covered with dead leaves. If you were to brush away those leaves, you would find sticky red-brown mud that smells like moldy clay. The plants on the floor of the rainforest don't get a lot of sun. To get as much light as they can, they have large leaves. Did you know that some of the trees in the canopy are 160 feet tall? Now that's tall. I remember, abiotic isn't dead. It's just something that's never lived, or else my grandpa Joe would be abiotic. Anyway, see ya. When people need a place to live, they use wood. Most of the wood they use come from the rainforest. The rainforest is now smaller. It was a lot bigger a long time ago. It used to fill up at least two times more than it does right now. As you can see, the rainforest has a variety of living and non-living organisms, and it is being chopped and cut down about one and a half acres a second.